So good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk, and thank you to the organizers for this opportunity. My name is Tatiana Hartinger. I'm a mathematician, and during my PhD studies, I specialized in graph theory. I currently work as a cognitive solutions expert in the technical area at Cognitiva in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where we implement solutions related to artificial intelligence. And one of the solutions that we implement is that of virtual assistants for different types of, of companies, um, whether it is a telecommunications company, uh, ser uh, financial services ones related to health, or uh, also with banks. Um, so the title of my talk is a conversation with graphs, and it's based on joint work with Federico Costa and Javier Portillo. And this solution that I'm going to tell you about uh, came up when our team leader, Fernando, uh, had the idea of enhancing our virtual assistants with the use of graphs. So that, that's when we started with Fede and Javi um, investigating on, on ways um, to do this. And we came up with this solution that I'm going to present. So let me first uh, start with an outline of the talk. I'm going to give an introduction, so I'm going to briefly describe what we, we did in, with this uh, solution. Then I'm going to tell you exactly what was the problem that we were trying to solve when, when we started working on this. I will tell you about the Watson Assistant tool, which is uh, the tool that we used in order to create our virtual assistants and it's one of the key ingredients of our solution. After that, I'm going to comment on the design of our graph on Neo4j, which is the other main part of our solution. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we combine these two aspects to create the, the final solution. We are going to have a look at an example of a movie recommendation with a really small graph so that we can see how the solution works. And after that, I'm going to conclude with a summary and then by mentioning the benefits and the potential that we think this solution has. So let's just begin with the introduction. So what did we do? We combined the technology of IBM AI Watson Assistant uh, with the use of a graph database supported by Neo4j. Um, to what we wanted to achieve is to be able to make a recommendation to a customer which is based on their preferences or desires and we wanted to make this in the shortest time possible. Uh, this type of solution that we created, we are going to see a specific example with a movie recommendation but of course it can be applied to all different types of recommendations or searches. Um, the graph database will contain all the information that we need in order to be able to make a recommendation. And the, what's important is that our graph will be provided with weights on certain edges uh, that we will calculate using a metric of our choice. These edge weights are the, the key ingredient that will make it possible for us to do this process of recommendation in the fastest way possible and we will see this in, in detail later. So now let me tell you about the problem we would like to solve. We were interested in uh, solving this problem. So our goal was to, in the context of a virtual assistant, to give a fast recommendation to a customer based on the request and or interest. So we may assume for this problem that this is the first time that we're interacting with the customer, so we have no previous knowledge about their preferences or the, the likes. So we would like to gather that information, and that's where our virtual assistant comes into action. We would like our assistant to ask the questions in order to get to know the user's uh, preferences. But other, we would like to, uh, this to be a good user um, experience. So besides the part of having a chat in, in natural language, which happens because of what's an assistant, we would like the process to take the minimum amount of time possible. And that's where our graph in Neo4j comes by. 
So first, as I said before, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Watson Assistant tool, which is where we developed our virtual assistant. So with IBM Watson Assistant, you can build a solution that understands an input in natural language and uses machine learning in order to respond to, to respond to the customer's questions in a way that simulates a conversation between humans. This type of solutions is implemented uh, with the technology of IBM Watson Assistant and is capable of providing answers to the queries that users may have in a specific domain. What uh, Watson Assistant does is to analyze uh, non-structured data. It processes natural language and in, in order to understand grammar and context. And we train this solution to be able to understand complex questions and evaluate all possible meanings, finding out what the user is asking in each case. It applies learning techniques to make predictions about the best classes predefined for sentences or phrases. This service interprets an intention behind a text and returns a classification, a classification which, is, um, cor which corresponds to certain confidence levels. Now, this value can be used to trigger a, a corresponding action. This could be maybe redirecting an application or answering a question. Our bot is trained in a specific domain in each case according to both the specific knowledge of the AI trainers, which would be us at Cognitiva, and the domain specialist, which would be the companies that hire us to do this virtual assistant. What's an assistant works with intents and entities. So let me define these two. What is an intent? It represents the purpose of a user's input such as, for, for example, the request for a movie recommendation or for the best product for their needs. And it could be anything. And an entity represents a term or an object that is relevant to your intents. These are pieces of information that we can obtain from the user. In our case, what we do is uh, we define all possible uh, answers to the different questions that may arise with value, as values of an entity. For example, if we consider the entity gender, in the case of a movie recommendation, we would have values drama, sci-fi, comedy, romance, etc. So there on the right you can see uh, an image of how a dialogue in Watson Assistant looks like. You can see it has a tree-like tra tree -like structure. It always starts with a welcome note and it ends with a anything else note, which uh, to which everything that doesn't correspond to the condition of all the other nodes goes to. So whenever a user enters an input, what uh, Watson Assistant does is uh, to verify whether this input corresponds to uh, one of the conditions of the nodes, whether this condition in the node is satisfied or not. If it is, it will continue with whatever we establish in said node, we will give an answer and maybe jump to another specific node or, or anything else that we would like it to do. So now let me tell you about the design of our graph using Neo4j. So there you can see a picture of how it looks in, in general. Um, this graph will contain different types of vertices we define these vertices of type question, which are the ones that you can see there in blue, in the second layer. Um, for example, if we consider the movie recommendation, this would be genre, favorite actor, favorite director, maybe the release date of the film. These are all the things that we can ask the user about. Then we have, below those, we have the vertices of type value. These, could, these are all the possible answers to the questions of course, of vertices of type question. Um, so there you can see, for example, in pink, we have all the possible directors, which are adjacent to the vertex of uh, type question director. Then we have in red all the possible genres of the movie. We have in green the values, uh, the different types of uh, dates that a movie can have. In our case, we just separated into modern and classic. And then we have in gray all the vertices uh, of type actor. Um, these are adjacent, of course, to the vertex actor. 
Now, then we have, uh, as, you, as you can see in yellow on the bottom, this would be our recommendation vertices, which in our case are all the movies from our database. Um, and there is also on the top, you can see a dummy vertex which we name start. And this vertex will be adjacent to all the vertices of type question. Now, um, as I mentioned before, each vertex of type question will be adjacent to all the vertices corresponding to the possible answers to said question. And finally, we have the recommendation vertices on the bottom and the adjacencies for this type of vertices will correspond to the characteristics of the, the vertex. So if in this case, for example, we consider the movie Sleepless in Seattle, which, which is marked there in red, then it will have edges coming from Tom Hanks because he's the actor in the movie. It will have an edge coming from Classic because it's before the year 2000. Um, then it has an edge coming from Romance because that's the genre of the movie. And we have finally an edge coming from Nora Ephron who is the director of the film. Of course, for this example, we are just showing a, a really, really small graph and we just uh, decided to keep it simple and, add, and only have uh, movies adjacent to one actor, one director, one genre, but of course it, this could have many adjacencies in real life. Now the edges between the vertex start and the vertices of type question are the ones that will have the, the edge weights. These weights correspond to the minimum number of potential recommendations that would be ruled out if we were to ask the user for that question. So our aim is to ask the question whose corresponding edge has the maximum weight. This will guarantee that even in the worst case scenario, we will get to our recommendation vertex faster. So let me just explain this in more detail. What we do is First, for each possible answer B to a question Q, we, cal we calculate the number of movies that would be ruled out if we were to ask question Q to the user and the response to that would be B. Then we take the minimum amongst those answers B to question Q as the weight of the edge between start, our dummy node start, and uh, the question type node Q. And finally, we take the maximum, the, the question whose edge has the maximum weight. And this is the one that we will choose as the best question to ask. Now, once we ask the question to the user and we obtain an answer from, from the user, the graph will be updated. We, we will delete all the vertices and edges that will no longer be relevant to us. And we will recalculate the edge weights. Now, now uh, let me tell you how we combine the two aspects of our solution. One, our virtual assistant in, in Watson Assistant and the, our graph in Neo4j. So in order to do this, we wrote a Python script um, that will go back and forth between Watson Assistant and Neo4j. The, the, we use the following open source libraries, JSON, Watson Developer Cloud, and Python Neo. And the code consists on three main parts. So the first one is for the creation of the graph in Neo4j, as we described it before. And we use some functions to create the vertices and edges. Then we have uh, some functions that will be required in order to calculate the weights for the edges that I mentioned between start and the questions. We define this metric that we, we, we have seen before and we create a function that determines the best question to ask in each step of the solution. And we will also have some functions that will be able to modify the graph by our uh, cipher queries in Neo4j. And finally, we have the part of the code that makes it possible for us to connect be between dialog a dialogue in Watson Assistant uh, while making queries in Neo4j. So as I said, we created this dialog in Watson Assistant, which contains all the intents, entities, and context variables that we will need for this task. 
Once the intent is detected, Watson will proceed to ask the necessary questions in order to obtain a recommendation for the user in the shortest time possible. After each question, the user's response will be stored in a context variable and will be used to modify the graph. And uh, what's important to notice is that uh, we also consider the case when the user does not have a, a clear answer for one of the questions, for one or more of the questions. In that case, we will modify the graph accordingly and we will see it in the example. So just to see a small diagram of our solution, on the one hand, we have a Watson Assistant, we have the conversation with the user, then we have our code connecting the two parts, and on the other side, we have our graph database in Neo4j, which contains all the information that we need in order to be able to make a recommendation for a user. So whenever we detect an intent, we start the conversation, the, the user writes down something, then Watson detects an intent, this will tell us uh, at which graph we need to look at, and then we will proceed with calculating the best question to ask in this step. This information will travel back to Watson Assistant. Uh, the assistant, of course, will ask uh, the user does that question, obtain the answer, and use that answer in order to modify the graph, and we will continue with the same procedure. So now let me show you the example of a movie recommendation of how this solution could work. So as I mentioned, first we have this start vertex at the top. Um, then we have those four vertices of type question. The questions that we consider for this example are the director, the genre, the date, and the actor of the movie. We then have the vertices of type value. In pink, all the directors. In red, all the genres for the movies. In green, we have the, the release dates separated by the year 2000 between classic and modern. And then we have the, in gray all the possible actors. And finally, at the bottom, we have our recommendation vertices, which are the movies from our database. And we are trying to get to one of these movies as a recommendation for a user. So let us check what the current status of the graph is in this part of the solution at the beginning. We have 14 vertices of type actor, two vertices of type date, 26 directors, five genres. We, we are starting with 36 movies on our database and we have four possible questions to ask the user. And of course we have our dummy vertex uh, name start. Since we have these four possible questions to ask, we will have the weights on the edges between our dummy <coughs> node start and those uh, question vertices. So we will calculate them using the metric that I mentioned. Uh, so we, we will calculate the number of um, possible movie recommendations that would be ruled out if we were to ask about the actor of the movie to our user. And there we obtain that the edge weight between start and actor is 27. We do the same for the other three questions and obtain that the, w the weight of the edge between start and date is nine. The weight of the edge between start and director is 32. And the weight of the edge between start and genre is 23. So since we're looking for the maximum, as we mentioned, the best question to choose in this first step would be the director. We should keep this in mind. This is what Watson will ask the user. Here we can see how the graph looks in the first step and we have all the corresponding edge weights between start and the question type vertices. So this is how the conversation may happen. First of all, the assistant uh, says, hello there, what can I do for you? The user may reply something like, can you recommend a good movie for this weekend? In that case, What's an assistant will detect the intention, which is movie recommendation. This will trigger a response, uh, which is sure, I'm here to help. In that step is when we will have a look at the graph that we had before, and we go to the graph and obtain the best question to ask in this case. As you can remember, we determined that this question is about the director of the movie. So this is what the assistant does. Do you have any favorite director? to which the user may reply, not really. It's possible not to have a preference. 
that's fine. In that case, what's an assistant will detect the entity director and the value will be, I don't know. This will trigger a response. Okay, no problem, I'll choose for you then. And we will save this information that we obtained from the user in the way, in a context variable, which is director. And we will use this context variable in order to modify our graph. So now let's have a look at how the graph is looking in this step. Now, in, if we look at the current status of the graph, we have 14 vertices of type director, two of type date, five genres. The number of movies is still 36 in this case. We couldn't rule out any of those because we didn't obtain any information from the user. But the number of questions has reduced to three. So now we have these three possible questions. We need to calculate the edge weights between start and the three remaining questions. So we do this and we obtain a weight of 27 for the edge between <coughs> start and actor. We obtain a weight of nine between start and date and a weight of 23 between start and genre. Since we are looking for the maximum one, we will choose as the best question in this step to ask about the actor of the film. Here we can see how the graph looks in this step. The vertices of type director have disappeared because uh, this will no longer be relevant information for us. We already asked the user about it, so we will not ask again. And we have three possible question vertices. So the dialogue continues. We know we need to ask about the actor, so the assistant will ask who's your favorite actor to which the user may respond, I'm a big fan of Tom Hanks. So we get this information, we detect the entity actor, and this time the value will be Tom Hanks. Again, we store this information into a context variable that we will use in order to modify the graph. So let's have a look at how the graph looks like now. Uh, we will have two vertices of type date, five of type genre, Notice that in this step, we have uh, the, the number of possible recommendations have reduced significantly. We, uh, we have nine films remaining, and the number of questions that remain is two. So in this step, we need to calculate the edge weights for the two edges between start and these two possible questions. We calculate the edge, the edge weight between start and date, which is three, and the edge weight between start and genre, which is four. Again, we are interested in the maximum, so we will take as the best question to ask in this step, the genre of the movie. So let's look at the graph now. It's much smaller in this step. We have no longer the vertices of type actor and the question vertex actor has disappeared as well. This is no longer relevant to us. We have these two questions remaining, gender and date of the movie. And we established that the best question to ask is about the gender of the movie. So that's how the conversation will proceed. The assistant will ask what type of genre would you prefer? The user may say, I feel like watching a romantic movie. So in that step, we will detect the entity gender with value romance. Once more, we will save this information into a context variable gender, which we will use to modify the graph again. In this step, if we look at the current status of the graph, we have two vertices of type date, one vertex of type movie. So as you can see, we are now in the position of making a recommendation for a user. And we still have one question remaining. So there is a question that we didn't need to ask. If we would have done this in the traditional way, we would have asked all the questions. But in this step, in this, uh, with this solution, we saved one question. And of course, this is a really, really small example. We wanted to keep it simple uh, so that the sol solution can be seen easily. But this is where we gain the most. If we have a huge amount of data, we can rule out a lot of possible recommendations. So this is our graph now. We have one remaining uh, vertex of type recommendation. That's the movie that we will recommend. And of course, it's also possible to want more than one uh, recommendation. We could have a list of 
free five of any, type, uh, any number of recommendations that we can give to the user and they can be uh, ordered according to some ranking that we decide. So the assistant will recommend this movie which is Sleepless in Seattle, and now he can provide all the information that we had in our original database. So we know it's a classic, it's a romance movie for the, from the year 1993. It features Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, and is directed by Nora Ephron. So we got to our recommendation in the end. Now uh, I will mention a brief summary of everything we've seen. So our goal, our main goal was to use a virtual assistant in order to give a fast recommendation to a customer which is based on their interest or requests. We model all the information that we need in, uh, for, to solve this problem in the form of a graph database in Neo4j. On the other hand, we create an instance of what's an assistant that will make our conversation possible. We combine these two aspects of the solution Whenever the assistant detects a certain intent, it will start making questions to the user to find out about their preferences uh, in a way, in an order which is determined by our graph, via these edge weights that I mentioned before. And once it obtains an answer from the user, it will um, store this information in order to modify the graph and continue with the conversation in the same way until we have all the necessary information in order to make our recommendation. So as a conclusion, to sum up this, uh, this solution, what we obtain is a recommendation through a process that simulates a conversation between humans and using a model in Neo4j that allows us to get to a solution in the shortest time possible. Now, before I finish, let me mention some of the benefits and what we think is uh, the potential of this type of solution. So usual virtual assistants have the limitation of being trained uniquely for answering a user's questions. In general, they are, they are reactive, the dialogue tends to be unidirectional, and their intelligence consists only on interpreting a user's request and giving an answer to it. So what we think is that the next step for this type of technologies is to establish an interactive and bidirectional dialogue where here the virtual assistant is the expert in a specific domain and will be able to provide useful guidance to the user by making the most relevant questions proactively in order to help them make a decision. So what we did is we added another layer of intelligence to the virtual assistant through one or more graphs containing all the information that an expert in the field might have. Now, what we think are some possible applications for this type of solutions could be perhaps a sales advisor, an expert salesman on a specific product. Here, we could have graphs corresponding to different type of, type of products. Uh, so we could have a graph for refrigerator recommendation, one for microwave ovens, one for TVs, etc. And we, of course, the recommendation vertices in that case would be all the products that we have available. And then the questions could correspond to the size, the price, or any type of characteristics from these products. Then we think it could also be applied to pre preliminary medical diagnosis or assistance for, assistance for patients. Here we can have as, uh, our um, yellow nodes would be all the possible diseases. And then we could ask about um, the different symptoms that the patient has. And finally, um, for problem resolution for technical support, here we, we would like the assistant to ask questions to the user in order to guide him uh, in the best direction to get to the specific malfunction of the device that we're interested in, in helping uh, with. Now, uh, I would also like to mention that this same solution might have uh, graphs on different themes or subjects, so the assistant could be uh, able to give guidance to the user in more than one topic at once, and it will detect all these different types of intents from it. So to sum up, this is what we, we did at Cognitiva. We enhanced our virtual assistants 
assistant with uh, the use of uh, graph database in Neo4j uh, by making them reactive and making them able to ask the question for, uh, ask the best question in, in each step to the user in order to get to know their preferences and do this in the fastest way possible so that we can provide a good advice for the user. So that's all from my part. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.